Hello, I'm Rio. Uh, I'm head of design at Cursor. Today I'm gonna show you Rio as. Oh no. I build Cursor by day, and when I go home, I vibe code and I just play with Cursor. I started making websites uh, when I was 11, and then I got into like Apple stuff. I was really inspired by like the first iMac. It kind of taught me like you can make technology feel more human. And now like with AI and with Cursor, I want to show people like you can just vibe code any idea and it doesn't have to be slop. It can be something really polished. You can put a lot of soul in it. RealOS started from just this app. I built it before I left Notion for my Notion friends. I make a lot of noises in meetings. So I made this so, so that when they miss me, they can hear my voice. Oh no. Plus one, plus one. It's the same thing. I started building this uh, in V0. It looked nothing like this. It's like super standard UI components. And then I just asked it, what if you made it more interesting, kind of like retro Mac OS -y. And I did it. Like, it's not quite exactly what I wanted. So I brought it down to cursor. I asked it to, like, uh, frame this in a window, and then I did it. I asked it to add a menu bar, and then I did it. Like, all, everything is real. Like, you can see it has, like, a help menu. You can see, like, this is, like, the about. Everything's open source, too. You can click on the GitHub link. Now that you have a, you know, like, a menu bar, a window, then now what? Why not, you know, add another app? So the next app I made is this browser. It is like a time traveling browser. You can go back in time. You can also be in the present, but also now you can go into the future. So for the years that are um, recent, they come from the Wayback Machine web archive. I, I love them. And for everything else, I use like AI to generate them. So if you go back to like, 1985 Apple, you get to see their website like reimagined in that time. It will rewrite all the stories, um, restyle the things in that way. And then I made this, which is like a time machine. Um, you can just boom, go into it. You can go, you know, forward in time. So like here, and then it will load that time. And you can kind of preview what's in there. So I don't know, like consciousness has like expanded or maybe like closer to the present. Uh, here, here's like a Japanese page. So you can actually uh, change what you want to generate. Um, you can pick the year, you can pick the language. There's a couple like random ones that the agent made up, uh, let's say like a AI language, maybe this one. And then we can go to different locations. And maybe I should add like more finance in other places. Maybe we go, I don't know, Canada and year. Okay, let's try this. And then it's gonna read the current web page and then I'll live generate something for that. And it live generates all the web page content for you. Also, this uh, noise is like programmatic. I just asked the, uh, the, the agent, can you make me like a Brian Eno elevator music type of vibe? And I did it. So this is Apple in ear. 2100 in the language of AI. It's very neural. Also, Canadian. I did instruct it to be pretty specific. Say, like, for the future years and the past, past years, it will grab your current web page, it will fetch the web page, turn it into Markdown, and then put it through my uh, generating prompt. And then, based on your model settings, it will kind of, you know, do the right thing. And then it will save the web page in a global cache. So every single user in the planet, they will kind of see the latest cache page. Um, if you refresh, it will replace that page. You know, you can kind of skim through the time. You can actually do a lot of things with whatever that's there already. Like the models that we have and cursor as, added as it is today, but it is very hard for a lot of people because you need to know a lot of things. You need to know to add the right context. You need to know how different models behave. Some models are good at, say, like one shot generating this UI. Some models might be good at, like, say, pretending to be 
to be me. Um, some models might be um, maybe more good at like tool use. So maybe you can like play some music for me. And it will call a tool and open up iPod. So different models, you know, they behave differently. You need to kind of have an intuition and the only way to do it is you play with it, you build it. Okay, now let me show you something new. So this is baby cursor. Um, it looks like cursor. It works like cursor. All the keys kind of work. I can also say like, hi. So it works kind of like cursor, but I get to play with it um, to kind of experiment different ideas and also test different models. I try to give different models the same prompt and let them make the same thing and see what happens. What if we start from scratch? In Baby Cursor, let's make a new snake game. How about that? Maybe I'll just start with some random file and then we will make a new one. So make a snake game that is auto playing where the snake eats the apple and it just keeps going. Okay, let's see. Now it's gonna generate a snake game. Wow, wow. Oh, okay, let's try it. Open, okay. So there's like a one shot auto playing snake by GPT 4.1. We can try the same thing, say like with, with a smaller model. Let's try this one. 4.0. See, it got better. So I built baby cursor because I need to kind of prototype different states of this thing that's kind of indeterministic. It can have like a lot of different, say, different tools, different like states of the code. Maybe there's like multiple files added. Maybe I'm like doing some really intricate like text editing of things. Like it's really, 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 really hard to prototype these things in Figma if you want them to feel real. And the easier route right now is actually to just code. I built this whole thing in almost like an afternoon. Having everything functional, like all the UI functional, like as an actual editor, it auto updates, it has a, even like a preview view that we don't have yet. And the chat works. Oh, what is this? Who knows? So right now we're doing is um, we're doing a pass on settings. We have a lot of settings right now in, in cursor, and they're kind of very clunky. Like people don't know where to find things. Uh, I wanted like a way to quickly prototype. So this whole thing took around two prompts. It's entirely functional. I I kind of told it like what kind of structure I needed. Um, say like I want these to be like you know. There's like this different tabs of settings. There are um, different sections, different field sets. Uh, field sets between them, you know, they, they have like a little gap. Some of them can have like a title. Um, some of them can even be like conditional. So you can close this auto run thing and then the settings disappear. A lot of these things, if you prototype in Figma, it will take forever. But this only took us like two prompts. Do you think other people outside of Cursor will have access to the Cursor one day? Uh, I mean, it's, it's out there. This is like a public website. You can actually look, look at it. But please don't, don't use it too much. Um, I pay for it. I'm kind of curious Wait. if we put this video out, how fast would you do it? Oh no, please don't. <laughs> uh, so most of the Rio OS stuff is powered by uh, Cloud. If you talk to Rio, it feels the most like me. For example, we can ask, what do you want cursor to be? Cool. So this whole thing is just a couple lines of text. So it's like a massive giant system prompt. And then depending on um, the state of the system, what app you have running, 
it will selectively piece together the right prompts together. Um, it's kind of like cursor, like we, we like in the back end, we try to compose everything, you know, all the context, all the prompts, reword them, boom, send it to the agent, and then magic happens. It's the same idea. All of these things are so easy to do now. All of this, like I have a fake terminal. Oh, this one's cool, but we can't really show it here because there's no camera. Maybe we can try something else. So this thing also allows you to switch cameras. So I can actually do this. Whoa. Okay. Um, all right. It's kind of awkward, but here's everyone. I had this uh, photo booth uh, app inspired by Apple again. Um, Steve Jobs did a really cool demo on stage with this. I started with these like really simple filters. It's like just colors, um, pretty normal. And I built this. So in the browser, there is this time machine. And then the time machine has some shader effects behind it. I just had a random idea. So now that I have shaders, why not um, make some shader effects? So I made this. So now you, you get like weird shader base effects. Uh, let's try this one, maybe like a, oh, I love this one. Oh, I did not make up any of these. The agent made them. I added this photo booth app component and I asked the agent, make some shader base effects and then add the shader renderer that I made that, you know, works with the webcam as another context file. And then they just made like a couple of these. It's not as fancy at start, but you kind of get the core of it. The functionality is there. And then you just ask it to be like a little more crazy. Uh, or maybe you have something in mind, maybe like, uh, I want a glitch effect, and then you get a glitch effect. I want a kaleidoscope, and you get a kaleidoscope. When I first played with computers or the internet, things back in the days like had some warmth in it. If you look at like all the wallpapers, like these are actually real wallpapers from like the old days in, in Mac OS. Like there is some, some more human this in there. Things were a little unknown. People were more, you know, optimistic. And then you kind of realize like, oh, we're all just doing the same things over and over again. And we're almost at the same stage right now with AI. We're like here now. And this kind of reminds you of that. And then it helps you kind of reimagine the future. It's like you can make it a little more fun. You can you know, call back history. You don't have to discard what's there. And also just have some fun. Like, I love music, so I can, I can just make a keyboard. And then there's also this. It's like a real iPod with songs that I like. It's completely like full uh, vibes driven. I just do whatever I want. Like. Last night, I just polished this UI for like two hours so that this thing does this. I also have this. So I actually grew up um, with PCs and then I used to play this a lot. It's like a bootleg version of Mario. Let's see. Oh, 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 oh. It's a little slow. Oh, oh. Oh, let me show you the resizers. This one's really popular on Twitter. You can turn on debug mode. And then now you see these like red bounding boxes. You can see them like when you drag them, like how they work. So this thing works on every single device, including the phone, iPads, like Tesla, whatever. Like on big things, it's like you need to your finger and they move. Why not just do one thing that does both this and this? Made a fake notion. There's like a slash menu here. Made paint. This one, this one was really easy. It was like a one shot almost, but it works. This one started 
as a really ugly YouTube player, but I just made it more fun. I added some noise effects when it's not playing. And when you play, There's lots of ways it has like a VHS sound. One of the ways that I believe people express their appreciation to, to the rest of humanity is to make something wonderful and put it out there. I feel like in a year, like more people will be able to make this. It's almost like an extension of your yourself. They're almost like me. Who am I? <laughs> so you are me and I am you. It's almost like two consciousness, kind of trippy. Things back in the days were just like, like people building computers, people building these things. They built tools for creation. They built things for people to make more things, to make their ideas become reality. I think with, with tools like Cursor, if you have the curiosity or a little bit of time, you can actually do whatever you want. It might not be perfect the first shot, but you can break down a big problem into small problems that the AI can do. Like a lot of people think, ah, AI cannot do all this crazy stuff. And then they will put in their crazy idea in one short sentence into the prompt box, enter. And then they expect their crazy idea to be built perfectly. It doesn't work like that. But if you can really think about what you're trying to do, design it conceptually, uh, make the right architecture calls, tell it exactly what you want at every given stage for every single piece of the thing, give it the right context, then it might just do what you want it. It takes a lot of playing to build intuition. You can control every single aspect of it. You know, you, there are certain parts of the of the experience you don't like doing, or maybe you are a little bit bad at making front end stuff, but the AI is better. It will kind of cover that. It will make your thing even better. I think the roles of say designers, engineers, product managers, all the definitions of what people should do will change. And then all of these things will blur. The AI does not discriminate between different like forms of inputs. I can describe my reel as say through chatting, but maybe like a PM can just, you know, they can do their own like PRD thing. Or the designer instead of like drawing boxes in Figma and painting like pixel colors, they can actually interact with the actual code and it will be real. It might not be perfect, but you get to mold it. You get to iterate on it. You get to see the idea come out in real life really quickly. Then you get to, you know, play with more ideas and you get to like refine everything really quickly. You can make the thing exactly the way you want. Mm -hmm.